You ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm clicking the button. Pulling up the notes. Pulling up the notes here. Hold on. Don't know why I'm going Jersey on you. <laughs> Firehouse Vigilance. It is the weekly, 100% the weekly scrap coming at you. A whole bunch of freaking morons. Dialing in, checking in. We got Brent. Brent, his name is Brent Fenton on the weekly scrap this week. And uh, that's really all I, oh my how how do you how do you make this work? I don't I don't understand. Hold up, that's all I got. That's all I got. Okay, sorry. I wanted to lead off with my my terrible. Uh, Firefighter Fenton imitation. So there it was. We'll see if anybody actually comments. Uh, weekly scrap number one forty five. My guest tonight is none other than Brent Fenton. Of course, he is best known for his giant. Rust-colored mustache and the character known as Firefighter Fenton. He is a career fire captain paramedic with more than 18 years of experience in Arizona. He has been married to Mrs. Firefighter Fenton for 12 years, and they have four children. He has a passion for comedy. He has a passion for music, and he uses those passion to create content and absolutely uh, bring a lot of uh, insight into the fire service and keep it entertaining. He has a gift and I am proud to have him on the scrap for an awesome conversation. Uh, welcome my brother, Brent Fenton to weekly scrap number one forty five. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Uh, thank you for putting up with my awesome firefighter Fenton imitation. <laughs> I've heard worse. <laughs> okay. Well, that I'll take that as a compliment. Now, here's hey, the deal. You, I really yeah. wanted a red mustache, and apparently Brent has bought every red mustache on Amazon <laughs> because the next ones come in on a container ship in December. So, <laughs> all right, here yeah, we go. We, People we are already trying a lot. All right. Uh, let's go from Daniel Harris. Uh, I must ask you a question. That, that of course, had to be said. Um <laughs> What up, fellas? Keep it salty. Tom Amper said, sup, gents. That's from Will Simmons. Oh, yeah, man. Funniest dude around. Respect from Steve Kaiser. Um, yeah, my wife actually chimed in and said, the fact that you've been excited for a week to wear that mustache, so glad you had the moment. I really wish I had, <laughs> I had more. But um, anything I missed in the intro, anything you would like to add? No, I, no, I think that was good. I think you nailed it. So, yeah. <laughs> It made me sound cooler than I am, I think. You are very <laughs> generous. I wanted to say freaking morons, and I wanted to get it right. but um, Come on, morons. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. <laughs> Audience, get your questions primed and ready for uh, Fenton. This one should get interesting. Uh, Kyle Romagus is the unofficial slash official producer of The Scrap. He will be fielding your questions and throwing them at me. Um, other than that, man, I want to start off right out the gate and get to the questions and say, I want to start with young Brent and sort of take us down the road of what has made you, you, uh, were you just a class clown when you were younger? Did this come, uh, were you the last of 13 children and needed attention? I mean, just, just go for it. Well, you know, so I'm, uh, there's only two kids in my family, just me and my older sister. She's also okay. a firefighter. Um, but we come from a family of law enforcement, born and raised Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I, I think what really started it was that I was born with, um, red hair and freckles. So, uh, that, <laughs> that was survive or be eaten alive, you know? So, <laughs> right. No. Uh, yeah, I, you know, my dad, he's the OG Fenton. He's, uh, he's hilarious. All, any, any of the, the, I guess the funniness that I got or the, 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 the comedic side of me, I definitely got from him. But uh, no, yeah, definitely. You know, having red hair as a kid is cool until you're like eight and then there's some character building years and then uh, <laughs> and then you're fine. <laughs> right. Right. And then you're and then you're that's, then you're you. That's where I learned how to beat people to the punch. So, you know, <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. Pulling it up. So, yeah. But no, yeah. Born and raised, like I said, in Arizona, my whole uh, whole family is law enforcement. And then uh, my dad was like don't do this, go be a firefighter. So I went on a ride along with some of his buddies and then, uh, the rest was history, man. So yeah, I was, I was always, I always enjoyed making people laugh. And I always had, I always grew up having family or friends be like, uh, man, you should be a comedian. And I heard that all the way through, even in my career as a firefighter, dude, I feel like you're missing the boat. You should be a comedian. And 
you know, you start to think like, did I miss my calling? You know? And then, so <laughs> then I discovered social media and was like, Oh, well I could, I could do both. Why not could, both? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Um, so. so whole family law enforcement and you feel like, uh, their experiences, especially modern law enforcement pushed you over the last, I mean, 20 years ago, obviously towards the fire service. Yeah. You know, my dad, so my dad and two of his brother, he's, he's the youngest of four, but two of his uh, older brothers were also police officers. And, um, they had, they all, they all successfully retired, you know, nobody, nobody had any injuries or anything like that. So, uh, but my dad, um, he had some, some crazy stuff happen during his career. You know, one of his, when he first got promoted to Sergeant, like two weeks later, one of his officers was, uh, ambushed and killed. And, uh, and then, um, his best friend, like five years later was same thing. He was ambushed and killed all, both of them, uh, Phoenix police department. And, uh, you know, my dad, I remember I was, I was gung ho to be a cop. That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a cop. And I actually, I, I was, I was gung ho to, I love the forest. I love camping, I love the outdoors. And I wanted to do law enforcement in the forest. So I was like, I'll go be a forest ranger. Right. right <laughs> so, right. so I was on that career path. And then, uh, my dad, you know, after, uh, both of those, he was just like, you know what, I'm not going to your funeral. He's like, you, you, law enforcement is not what it used to be. I've got some buddies in the fire service, go check it out. Um, so I went on a ride along and, uh, I always tell people I had the ultimate bait and switch because, uh, I went on a ride along and, and at a Phoenix, at a Phoenix station in downtown Phoenix and, uh, the captain on the ladder truck, let me ride for 24 hours, which is, you know, we don't do that, but yeah, like two thirty in the morning, and we got popped on a structure fire and uh, pulled out. And <laughs> Your I, first ride along, <laughs> very first ride along. Yeah, nice. got pop, popped on a structure fire. We pull up, and as we pull up, it spreads to the neighbor's house. So now it's a dual house fire. And I remember just watching these guys, you know, pulling lines, going in, cutting holes, doing the whole. I'm just like, this is amazing. This is what I want to do, you know. And then. Like I say, it's the ultimate bait and switch because I don't think we ran one lift assist. You know, I don't think we had like shooting, stabbing, house fire, all this stuff. You're like, man, this is awesome. This is what this you guys do. That's what they're like, oh so. yeah, this is this is all we do. You know, man. And then yeah, then then I get hired and find out like, oh, that was an anomaly shift. You know, <laughs> they're like, this kid's the black cloud. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right, catching you up. Um, yeah, there we go. My uh, Michael Lataki said, I always thought your mustache was real until my captain told me it wasn't. Laugh out loud. That's why he makes the big bucks. <laughs> and uh, Andrew McGinn said, family of law enforcement, then y'all the family that had the smart kids. Laugh out loud. <laughs> so I'm sure you've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No, I love it, man. I love the stories and especially the bait and switch because uh, that is the ultimate. Uh, yeah. There was an incident that was pretty serious for you, and I, because I, I, I do research every time I bring a guest on, and I try to find, I try to dig in and see where else you've been and ask questions. But an incident that that yeah, was pretty serious for you that you kind of uh, attribute to how you do your comedy and how you cope. But but go ahead and, and tell the story a little bit in your own words. Yeah. So um, the the incident that I had it was it was a structure fire. Um, this was back in. Uh, 2018. It was actually June 2nd, 2018. I remember that. I'll never forget it. But <laughs> uh, we had a, uh, I was, so I was working on an engine. I was actually, I was, I was an acting captain at the time. I wasn't promoted yet. So I was acting and um, we were in an area. So we had just merged with this uh, town and took over them um, because their, their, the old fire department that they had there just had some mismanagement and, basically they were going under. And so our department ended up absorbing them, taking them over. So we were there. So we were kind of on two. So it, how we do things in Arizona is we have the, the regional dispatch where basically there's, there's 20, I think it's 28, 26 or 28 departments. We're all on the same. Uh, we all do the same SOPs. We have wow. the same, same dispatch, same radio channels, everything. Right. Um, there's this, area that we took over they were not in it so we were this plays into the story we were on operating off two separate dispatch systems so just another so, <clears throat> right on so when we get when we got we got dispatched to a uh, it came out as a debris fire and and it was uh you know it's june and that day it was over 110 um super dry the monsoons don't come in until early july so it's just we're talking single digit humidity and so when a debris fire kicks out you know we 
we call everybody because especially when I heard the address, I knew where it was. I knew this was going to be potentially a large uh, fire. And in that area, it's kind of a wildland urban interface. So there's a lot of homes, but there's a lot of wildland in between these homes. And when we pulled out, um, saw the column and I could tell, okay, this is a brush fire. So I get on the radio and I call the dispatch and tell them, you know, I start, I start adding. And so how we do things in our system is we have, you know, we'll say balances to, you know, a three in one, a working wooey or whatever we have, we have different, you know, terms that will, that will, uh, signal them to dispatch certain units. So we don't have to piecemeal it. You know what I mean? So with this other dispatch system, I had a special call. Okay, I need a battalion chief. I need uh, two additional engines, two water tenders, you know, t- three brush trucks. I, I had like piece it that way. And then I'm expecting them to translate that over to um, the other dispatch system because that's where my help's coming from. Right. Because we're not on that system yet because we haven't, the infrastructure wasn't built yet to get us on that system. So, uh so that as we're responding, we're heading out. It says it's a, you know, it's, it's a 10 by 10 or 15 by 15 debris fire, whatever. Anyway, we take off, we see the calm. I can tell, okay, this is brush. We start heading through town. We go underneath the freeway. When we come on the other side of the freeway, I can see that this is now gotten into something because it's a large black column. And so we're, as we're pulling up, it's me and my engineer who are on the truck. And then the two firefighters, one of the firefighters is on the brush truck and the other firefighters on the water tender. And so they're behind us. So when we come or we come up onto the freeway, the alarm room clears me and tells me, okay, we're getting multiple calls on this. Um, sounds like this has gotten into a structure, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> as we're saying that we're pulling in on scene, he's still yakking on the radio. And I'm just like, shut up, dude. I'm trying to give my on scene report. <laughs> <laughs> Cause now I can see, okay, this is, this is a house that is, um, they're, they're on like probably an acre and a half or whatever. It looks like a freaking junkyard. There's 17 cars and three RVs and you know, you name it everywhere. Um, and there's a large fire at, to the rear of the structure and it, it is in the house. And as we pull up, um, I'm giving my on scene report, you know, and, and we do blue cards. So I know when I start saying on scene report, I've said people are like, Oh, that sounds like blue card, you know? So I'm like on scene of a single story modular home, you know, with a working fire to the rear, pulling an inch and three quarters, whatever. Do my whole on scene. As I'm taking command, as I'm getting on a scene report, the on scene report, I see the front door open up and a woman steps out and she's looking like, what's all this commotion? What's going and, on? Yeah. Yeah. And I get out and mind you, I'm wearing my brush gear because we grabbed brush gear as we left. <clears throat> so now I'm like in the middle of trying to take my brush gear off, get into my turnouts and go to work. And I'm like, come with me, ma'am, come with me. You need to come out of your house. And there was a, a sheriff's deputy that came up and he's, and she's like, she's like, Oh my God, there's a fire back here. And I'm like, ma'am, your house is on fire. She turns around, she runs right back inside. Oh, wow. So, so we're like, great. So now I'm like running to the front door. Like I'm wearing, I'm literally wearing my, station pants because i haven't got into my turnouts yet because i'm just like get out of the house so i I run up to the front door with the deputy i'm like man you need to get out and she's like uh she's like i can't my babies and so the deputy's like i'll get her so i run out start getting turned out and now the other two firefighters are pulling into the scene i'm telling them get your brush stuff off get your structure gear off here we go so my engineer's pulling hand lines everybody's you know busier in a one-legged man in a you know butt kicking contest you know (laughs) right on we're so we're getting after we're pulling lines. Um, and mind you, I'm kind of seeing everything as I'm, as we're coming up, I see toys. I see a trampoline. I see evidence that there is in fact children at this home. So we go in cause we're like, all right, we need to get these kids out of here because the fuel loading at this house. I, and I'd also known this house before because this is actually, this was the third time there had been a structure fire at this house. And this house oh, wow. is, okay. it's a hoarder house. Um, and so I'm already got that in the back of my mind. Like this is probably going to go defensive. Uh, once we get, you know, depending on, obviously depending on how, how quickly we can get a, a knockdown on this, but if we can't get on this quick, um, it, it's, this is not a place we're dying over. So we're, we go in there, the deputy gets her out and she just keeps screaming, my babies, my babies, my babies. So we, now we're going in, we're searching as we make, make our way in, we start, we start heading down the hallway. Like I said, it's like paths. Of sure. just garbage. Typically. We start making our way down the hall. Oh yeah. Start making our way down the hallway. You can see that there's a working fire in the back bedroom. The smoke is banking down, We're starting to get high heat. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, you know, one, how are these kids not coming out already when mom was screaming all this stuff? 
So as we're making our way back, we start getting pushed down from heat. Um, we can see a fire in the back. I get radioed from the, uh, my engineer outside and he lets me know there's no kids home. She's talking about her bird, her two cats and her dog. Gotcha. And so we're like, okay. <laughs> we're, so we we're like, all right, well now we know we're not looking for people. So we start to, we start to make, uh, make an attack on the fire. Um, and it's just not, it's just not, uh, it, our, our efforts are not effective. You know, the environment is, is getting worse and worse. We have no help. It's just us. Uh, we're, we don't have the ability to run, you know, a two and a half in that area because we only have, you know, we're running off of tender water and stuff like that. So, so anyway, we start to back out and start to redeploy and it, is at this point it's running through the fuel loading is so high it's running right. throughout the whole house now obviously this is time is elapsing here so i'm telling the story it's obviously not it's longer than what it sounds like um but uh we make the decision to go defensive because this is a hoarder house it's ripping it's not worth dying over uh obviously we got to change our tactics because what we're doing right now is not working so we back out uh we kind of reassess as we come as i come out uh we now have wind and the wind is shifting and the wind is blowing the fire. The wind is blowing the fire and the smoke down on us. And it's starting to run and spread and it's starting to cross the road. It's starting to head towards other houses, all all this stuff. Like the worst Um, thing you could. Yeah. If you could add a worst part to it. Yes, exactly. And mind you, I'm thinking help is coming. So. Oh, gotcha. I see. I see where the breakdowns are starting to yeah, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Help is coming. Uh, we're we're uh, running now. We're getting low on water. We're getting low on air. Um, we come out. We trade out air bottles. So now we're in our second air bottles. Um, we have a second line deployed to the rear of the structure, knocking down where the bulk of the fire was hitting at. We have our line on the front of the structure. So it's me and a firefighter, and then I'm trying to watch because I have another firefighter by himself around the side around the the east side of the structure i'm on the north side of the structure and like i said we got wind running around that firefighter on the east side he's freaking just trying to manage to keep fire from going around him to go into these other structures we think helps coming basically to fast forward a bit i i had balanced it to a first alarm i had told him that we went uh defensive what happened was when i asked for all of those all the help they dispatched a single engine company with a brush truck and that was it. Um, Just a lost in translation type. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It it should. Yeah. And it it was, this was, this was something that we had dealt with. I mean, there, there was many times with this dispatch where we would, I would call for a rescue, you know, Hey, I need a rescue name and it's whatever. And clear them, clear them, clear them. They're not answering. I I'd go five minutes and then I would call them on the rig cell phone and they'd pick up the phone. Hey, what's going on? I'm like, yeah, Hey, this is Brent on engine, whatever, blah, blah. Been trying to get a hold of your radio. Oh, really? Here, give me a radio check and do a radio check. Oh, I hear you loud and clear. I'm like, yeah, imagine that, you know, they're probably like, oh, shoot, <laughs> turn it up, you know? <laughs> but right. anyway, so, so there was, there was a big breakdown. It took, it took forever um, to get help. The second truck didn't get there for uh, 35 minutes. Oh, wow. Um, we finally end up, and, and also during that, they, they can't really hear much of my radio transmissions until they get close because they have to switch over to the other system. And so by the time they get there, they think they're coming to a brush fire. Right. And then they get there and they realize it's not a brush fire, it's a structure fire. Anyway, so as we, as we continue and resources come in, we run out of water subsequently with our engine. We are out of air packs, but out of air bottles. We have no air and we're in a bad spot. Now we are in exposure. So I'm notifying command. Hey, we, we, cause command a BCS showed up and take command from me. All that stuff has happened. Sorry. I'm, I know I'm no, no, you're good. making it, That's, making it me, a long it story like, longer. Sounds like a fire. <laughs> so, it fi- sounds like a fire scene. So we all follow. Yeah. So, so when the BC got there, he took command for me. I let him know he made me, you know, uh, North sector and whatever, blah, blah. And as we, and so I, I let him know, Hey, we're low on water. We're low on air bottles. He's like, yep, we're going to get you water as soon as we can. As soon as we get a tender here. Um, he's getting more units coming now. Cause he's calling on his cell phone because where we're at, even the radios to the, uh, to our normal dispatch 
the towers not the towers aren't there so he's calling on his cell phone like hey this is worst case scenario you know whatever he's calling people telling them we need we need the units whatever so they're dispatching via cell phones so these people so everybody comes up anyway we we run out of water we run out of air bottles um i let them know hey we're we're gonna have to retreat out of our spot like we are we are in a bad position because now the fire has spread the fire has spread past us it hopped the road it took off and went towards a um another home to the north it caught that other home to the north on fire uh which uh one of the other responding trucks was able to knock down so they were able to save that house it was it was mostly just the exterior that that, that house had uh, damage but um while we were backing out again mind you it's 100 and death outside um we're out of air bottles fire has gone around us and now the fire is backing towards a shed that was on the north side of our truck well inside of this shed was nothing but um firewood basically lumber and firewood so this shed catches on fire that shed uh ultimately is right up against the fire truck well before this i had we had made the call we're backing out so when we're back in our engine out i'm back in my engineer like come on come on come on well there's a power pole the power pole is on fire it falls oh yeah Perfect. with live wires right behind the engine we can't get out so now i'm like okay this just this is this is just not our day so we're grabbing i'm like you know the truck in my mind i'm letting command know hey we got lines down our truck is trapped. We need somebody there. Now it's an exposure. This truck is going to burn. Command's like, do not let that truck burn. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I have I got no water. water. I got no air. I got no water. I got no air. We have no help. And, you know, the, the other units that are here are already engaged in other spots. We're still waiting for more trucks. Unless you can break somebody free, this is going to get real bad. One of the other trucks, they ended up pulling their line all the way across where we had to abandon. So we got out of there because the fire was just ripping. And then that shed was just blowing. And so we had to get out because also, so how this setup was where this house was, it was kind of like in a bowl. There was mountains around it. It was kind of in a bowl. So it was just everything. It was just holding that heat. Yep. And so we, as we, as we uh, pull out, uh, we head up to the road. I hear that truck that pulled their line across. They came across, um, a driveway and a wash over to where they were at. They were able to get their line there. And when they got there, I heard them say, uh, you know, be advised that that truck is on fire. And I'm just like, you know, like, yeah, yeah you know, it's like the worst thing ever. And, um, and then I'm also feeling like I'm literally dying. So, uh, a water tender gets there, you know, another truck gets there. They, they end up being able to, the, the truck sustained significant fire damage. It was a total loss. Uh, they were able to put that that fire out. Uh, I myself and another firefighter um, were transported uh, for heat exhaustion. Mine ended up being a uh, rhabdo, mm-hmm. so uh, had a couple of days there at the hospital. Um, that sucked. No, no doubt about <laughs> um, it. That sucked. You know, it was, it was super humbling. I learned a ton. Obviously, I, that was I gave you a lot of bits and pieces of that story, but it was. It was super humbling. Um, I I learned a lot. I felt I, I felt like you know a huge failure. You know what I mean? Like sure, sure. No, here I am. Sure. Here I am, an, an acting captain. You know, we go to a fire, and you know, I I, I fell into some traps, and you know, I, I learned a ton from that. Things that I can guarantee that I will never do again. You know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. So you know, and you, you can. It's very easy to fall into traps, and I saw the traps that I fell into, and you know, the trigger points in my mind now are, it, I mean, it changed me. And, and the, the greatest thing I think through all that was my fire chief at the time, he had 47 years in the fire service, just a fireman's fireman. And uh, he was actually on vacation when it happened. So he found out when he got back. Uh, but, uh, you know, I saw him and I said, hey, chief, sorry, you know, and he's like, what are you apologizing for? And I said, because uh, we didn't go back to the station, the same truck that we came in, (laughs) you know, he's like, did everybody go home? I said, yeah, everybody went home. He's like, then I don't care. He's like, that's what we got insurance for. He's like, did you learn anything? And I said, I learned a ton. And he said, all right, well then it's not a failure. He's like, it's only a failure if you didn't learn from it. So that's a hell hell of a, yeah, dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And it was, it was, 
it was awesome. And then he made a joke. He's like, you know what? He's like, insurance is going to give us the money for the price of that truck brand new. He's like, we were going to surplus that thing in a couple of years and probably get 10 grand. Right. <laughs> so he's <laughs> like, Mr. Bright Side. Yeah, he's like, I should be thanking you. <laughs> hey, dude, that, that, that sounds like a hell of a leader. So it sounds like you're a lucky person in that regard. Man. Yeah, so, yeah, man, it, you know, it just, it was, a, it was a crazy experience. And like I said, I, I, I learned some traps. I learned some things as, as a leader or as a captain that, um, you know, best way to get experience is experience. And I got it there. That's for sure. No, no doubt about it. All right, I'm going to get back to the audience here. Um, someone, Carlos Segura said, wow, no mustache. I didn't know. Hashtag mind blown. Do you get that a lot that they think it's real? Oh man. Uh, it's, it is insane. How many people think the most, even people that I meet in person, like at FDIC, right. I'd see right. people are like, man, which by the way, I feel like a complete buffoon wearing a fake mustache at FDIC the whole time, <laughs> but it's fun. But like, but guys are like, man, I thought this whole time I thought it was fake, but now I see you in person. It really is real. And I'm just like, yeah, it's real from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> All right. Question coming at you from Matt Sleet. Yeah. Matt Sleet, hopefully recovering well. Um, yeah. But Matt wants to know, does the firefighter Fenton voice ever, in quotation marks, accidentally come across the radio at 3 a.m.? Oh, sure. That's the funny thing is the dispatchers, you know, they all see me on the roster, so they know who it is. Right. And, oh, yeah, I've I've – it don't even have to be 3 a.m. They can just be a dumb call in the middle of the day. And I'm <laughs> we do snake removals at my department sometimes. And okay. so people will call for rattlesnakes at their house. And I've been known to take command of rattlesnake scenes, you know, give right them full on scene report. And... <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, the, the Fenton voice does come out uh, sometimes. Uh, Jason Tilson said that call was a shit show, but not by your doing. Don't know if you know Jason the Tilson. Yeah. All right. I work with Tilly. Fair enough. Lawrence Wadsworth said, man, Rabdo kicked my ass last year. It's the worst. Uh, Marco Isom said, sounds like you did the best possible job you could with the resources you had. Uh, and Josh Davis, I love this question. He wants to know, what is your biggest takeaway from that experience? If you can melt it down. Oh, man. Uh, and you, and feel, feel free to share multiple. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to melt you down to one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So, um, as a, I would say, as a supervisor, what I learned was um, don't confuse time on the job for experience. M- meaning, when with members of my crew, I had I had some members on my crew that performed, you know, as expected and above, and there was some of my crew that I expected a lot more of, and it just didn't go that way and and which was kind of mind-blowing because they you know we i had a seasoned crew but like i said everybody did the best that they could um but those were that was a big takeaway that i learned was don't let time on the job be mistaken for experience um you got to know your crew's abilities their decision making capabilities things like that um you you want to have crew members that can make decisions uh, if for whatever reason you're in a, you're not with them, you want them to be able to make good decisions, you mm-hmm. know, and, and sometimes some of the, some decisions just weren't made that I expected or I had, I'm like, really, I have to tell you that, you know what right. I mean? Like that, that's should be automatic. Um, and then also, uh, I fell into the trap of like, you know, we show up on a scene, we fight fire, we put our stake in the ground. This is where we're at. We're not moving. We don't lose. Um, and there's nothing wrong with reevaluate. I mean, you should be continuously reevaluating what you're doing and whether or not it's working. And if it's, uh, if it's not working, you got to change it because, you know, the only thing that's going to be consistent is that the fire is just going to continue to get bigger, you know, until it burns everything up. And then I guess it'll eventually go out, but, <laughs> right, <laughs> but no. you don't want to be part of what it burns up. And yeah, so just continuously reevaluating that. And there is no shame in saying where we're at was good, but now it's not. So let's move, let's reevaluate, let's reengage. And, you know, so that was, that was a big, the, I think those were the two, the two biggest takeaways for me was, was that, and yeah, just, just don't fall into those traps and just stand behind your decisions. You know, it's hard when you roll up to a house and you see 
you know, we can make a stop and then it just doesn't go that way. And it doesn't right. make sense why it's not going that way. And you get caught in that, like, no, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. And that was a trap that I fell, fell into because when I declared defensive, you know, I identified, you know, you're supposed to identify what is lost, write it off, protect exposures. I knew what was lost. I half wrote it off. Cause I would go to protect exposures and be like, ah, but we can, we can still do this. We, we can still, yeah, no, no, we can still do this. Almost, and yeah. it, yep. And it bit me and it, and it did. And you know, there's a reason why that's written about in books, you know, because it bites you and you've lived it. And now it really, mm-hmm. yeah, no doubt. About <laughs> yeah. It. Easy to talk about for everybody, but once you lived it, it's a way different story. Sure. Um, Andrew McGinn said, ever been on a call and the civilian ask you where the stash is, or they say, man, you look familiar. Uh, multiple times, yes. <laughs> as and I would say, as of recently, as of recently, it is happening more and more, and it's 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 cool. It, it's funny, um, you know. Sometimes people, I've had, I've been on calls. I've been on, I shouldn't say multiple times, but I have been on a call, and I know Jason from part of our, he's had this happen too, where we're like on a scene, on a call, treating a patient, doing something, and somebody comes up and is like, "Hey, you're done." It's like oh, not the time right now. Like I'm actually a firefighter. Yeah, I'm actually doing, doing CPR my job right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually doing my job right now. So like, I would love to say hi, but you know, just give me a minute. This person has no pulse. I got to pay attention to him right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um. Jason Schneider, and we're getting a lot of a lot of questions coming at you from the audience. So, uh, is it difficult to balance your comedic side with your responsibilities as an officer? Um, no, I don't think it is. Um, I I think that I would say I have uh, comedy driven leadership, if you will. Okay. <laughs> um, I I you know nobody wants to work somewhere where you can't have fun, and I and right. I. Like, you know, I always, that's my biggest thing is like, we're going to do our job. Like my expectations are that, you know, your job, you know it well, and that you do it. Um, and that we have fun doing that. And so, uh, <laughs> there, there are probably times when I make a joke when I shouldn't, um, you know, but eh, whatever. I think everybody does that. You know, I'll make, I'll make a joke and be like, Oh God, forgive me for that. That was bad. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a hard time balancing. I, I, I make it a point that I love to make content. I love, I love being firefighter Fenton. Um, but I also recognize that I am, um, in a leadership role and that it's important for me to lead, um, to one, to prove myself as a leader that I, that I'm, I'm not just like, you know, sure. I'm funny. And I get written off a lot, but sure. it's happened I my imagine. whole life. Where, I imagine where you, yeah, we're like you get written off like ah, oh, guy's just a clown. He's an idiot. Like, um, just because I'm funny and just because I'm nice doesn't mean I'm weak. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. You know, it's like the whole don't don't mistake the kindness for weakness kind of thing. Right, like, right. Um, and I know my job. I know it well. I do it well. Um, and I take care of my people. And I go to bat for my people. And um, and just because like I'm pulling punches and making jokes and laughing doesn't mean that um. I'm also not in the next breath going to go to bat for somebody or not going to, in the next, you know, instance be taking command of a fire scene or something. So, um, or, or be able to, you know, my crew knows that we're going to have a good time, but they, you know, it's just like every supervisor says, you know, don't make me do my job. Like they know, they know what to expect. So I think for me, I just try to keep it consistent. So they know what to expect from me. There's no guessing game. Like, Oh, he's always fun and games until it's not. It's like, they know where the line is and, and it's and I think we have a great time. I love it, man. No, I love the answer too, man. And I love the part about don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Don't don't mistake my love for having fun for weakness or lack of discipline or lack of leadership ability, man. And that's a strong exactly. message that anybody can resonate with. Um, I have a couple que- a couple comments I wanted to read to you, which is uh, yeah. And you brought up Patton, so I'll bring up Patton in a minute. But I wanted to say Andrew Starnes, Chief yeah. Starnes said, I greatly appreciate how you share your faith. And keep it clean. My daughter loves your videos, and you made her day by meeting her at FDIC. And he brought it up, and Chief Starn is one of the greatest people on earth. But uh, 100%, man, uh, I watched you and Patton. Like, every time I walked past the fire department booth, which is right there at a a perfect T-junction, there was a line of, like, 30 people waiting to take pictures with you guys. 
And no matter what, you guys had smiles on your faces, and you made every single person come up there feel like a rock star. Dude, <laughs> I, I told Jason, I was like, dude, you guys have a gift, man. Like, 100%. <laughs> it, like, it was – yo, go. It was no fatigue. It was, like, legit. Yeah, it, you know, it was – It it's it is so – I don't know. It, to me, it's just, it blows my mind that like I, you know, I come up with these ridiculous videos in this room or sitting on the toilet, <laughs> or two seconds after coming back from a call, and I'm like, I'm making a video about that exact thing right there, you know. But and just the fact that it has resonated with so many people, um, resonated, sorry, and it, that it has resonated with so many people, and I've been able to just meet people from all over and everybody it, it's it just blows my mind when people come up and be like you have no idea you know your videos have gotten me through some dark times and things like that and, and like you know the chief brought up you know faith and, and it being clean and that's on purpose you know i am mm-hmm. a christian and 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 everything is everything is on purpose like that I, I want i like to create moments where guys can sit down with their families guys girls whoever can sit down with their families and talk about you know, if the family doesn't understand why that, that is funny, they can explain that to them and they can all laugh together. And I, I just, I love to do that. And I love hearing, I never, I never uh, expected someone to come up to me and say that my videos got them through um, something like that. And so I just, I respect the platform and I respect the people that I meet because they're real people. And I'm right. just, I'm just like them. I just film stupid videos with a fake mustache <laughs> i'm telling you like you were telling that and you and and 100 percent, man the other day i was in a bad mood and i don't even remember why i got on my phone but the 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 chick eating the tomatoes right <laughs> while, while you're trying to enjoy your coffee dude and for whatever reason i started laughing because i just the, uh. the editing the editing was perfect the, the tomato seeds on your oh. face was perfect. It was great. So I, I started laughing in the middle of your answer right there because I started thinking of that. And that's your that's your gift, man, is you bring that ability. Uh, it is uh, powerful, powerful. Um, now I'm, I'm catching up on, on comments. And I know you get this a lot because this, uh, this is something that always affects me. But you have impacted firefighters and first responders in general in a positive way for sure, man. And and that's – it's crazy when you get those messages like, thank you for that. And you're like, thank me? I'm just like, – mm-hmm. I'm making a joke. <laughs> but – Yeah. But no, I get yeah. it. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It, it's crazy to just – And Nolan yeah, Christmas. People, people say that. He really captures it here. He says, those stupid videos with a fake mustache – are an awesome piece of the fire service. And that's the, that's the crazy part is that you are capturing the slice of the fire service with that. And it's yeah. going to be forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, do you ever think about that? It, the, I, you know, I think, yeah, somebody told me, dude, you like, it was FDIC two years ago. Guy came up and he said, you're like legit changing the fire service. He's like, you and Jason. I'm like, I was like, no. And he's like, no, for real. He's like, one, he's like, people don't want to end up on your guys' pages, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which I'm just like, all right, like I, it's all in fun. Everybody right. has a bad day. I just told you about my worst day. <laughs> With the freaking tin straps <laughs> and, again. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so, but you know, it's just, it's a, it, it's, it, it is crazy to think like, yeah, I mean, these videos are out there forever. And then what's crazy is like, I made that my knee hurts now video 10 years ago in um, it was, yeah, it was Aaron actually shoot. It's like 11 years ago now. Anyway, but uh, I made that video so long ago and I still get people saying like, Oh my gosh, I just saw your, my knee hurts now video. I'm, I'm an EMT student or I'm what, and it just, I'm just like, wow, that's crazy because it was so long ago, right? but it's still exactly what happens. And it's just a whole new generation of people. I'm just like, man, it just, just, it gets, it's overwhelming to think about the reach that it has and, and just kind of how, what it's turned into. It's crazy. No, it perpetuates. And, it's, and, 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 and I think that might be part of you and Jason. I mean, I don't want to exclude at all because, uh, it's timeless. Yeah. Yes. I seen safe is timeless. My knee hurts. Yeah. Is timeless. <laughs> you know, yeah. so, uh, I don't even remember the one you're like, uh, I, I, I was trying to remember, but anyway, okay. Uh, William Van Brenner wants to know, and I'll, I'll sit here and go over your individual bits one by one, and people will listen to me 
describe them to you, and that's not what... But anyway, William Van Brenner said, did the incident you had as an acting captain slow you down from wanting to promote? How did that affect you in that regard? No, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, it didn't slow me down. Um, it uh, honestly, it made me want to tell people about it. Like we we did um, trainings, and um, you know, I had the opportunity to tell other guys about the mistakes that I made, the things that I learned from that. You know, and, and um, like like I said, hindsight's always twenty twenty. So in the moment, I made the best decisions that I knew and the best things possible, and never knew that it was going to go that way. And it probably, and even if I made other decisions, it may have still turned out the exact same way. But um, I, I, it didn't slow me down. Um, it definitely made me um, do a lot of reflecting. I remember talking to my my wife about that, and I'm just like, you know, do is this like like I freaking had a fire truck burn up. You know, like, am I, is it, should I even be doing this? Like, should I even be sitting in that right front seat? You know, and maybe do a lot of reflecting. And, and she said, I don't think that has anything uh, to do with that. She's like, I think how you respond to what happened is going to be indicative of whether or not you belong in that right front seat, which right for me, I was right like, on. I was like, that's huge. And then even, like I said, talking to my fire chief too, he's like, you're not the first person to have that happen to. You're not going to be the last person to have that happen to. He's like, we work in a field where crap happens, and guess what? It happened. So, oh, and, and the fire gets yeah. a vote. People may say, you know, but the fire gets a vote. Now, mm-hmm. we can prepare for it absolutely, and that, and and we can learn from it. That's the biggest. That's the biggest. Uh, so, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Run, I'm gonna rapid fire here and go. Uh, yeah. What is your favorite topic, like to lampoon or bust chops on when you when you put on the big red mustache? Do you have a, Do you have oh, a favorite, man. or is it just is it just completely random? Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times it's random, but I, I loved it. I love to just highlight the monotony things, you know, the, I mean, whether the system abuser, you know, the frequent flyer that you run on all the time, or just, just the little things that I, I don't know. I, it's hard to pinpoint one specific thing. It, it is pretty universal random, truth. I, yeah. It's the, yeah, it's the universe. Exactly. The universal truth. It's the one thing where like, if I, I can create the moments that people go, oh my gosh, I have been that, or that is so and so. You know, that's the one thing. This job attracts the same people, and it's like I can, out of all the people I've met from visiting stations and people and whatever, you walk into a fire station, and I'm like, that's that guy, that's that guy, that guy's probably me. That's this, you know, it's all the same people. You know what I mean? It's like it's just this job attracts the same people all over the world. And no doubt about it, man. Uh, how many bits have you recorded that have never seen the light of day? Or, or, or is it is it a thing where you just put out everything you make, or is it a thing where you're like pretty selective? No, I pretty much I pretty much um, put out everything I make. Uh, you know, I realize that I realize, and that's that's kind of how I stay true to myself. Is I just put them out because I think they're funny. So right. if I think they're funny, whatever. I realize that not all of them are going to hit, some are going to miss, but I think all of them are funny. So I, 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 just, <laughs> I pretty much, I pretty much put out everything I make. I do have some, I actually just found one today. I was working on a video for my department and I was just listening to music while I was working on the video. <laughs> and I, This song came up and I was like, Oh shoot. Like I recorded a song and made it, but I never made the video. I'm like, gotcha. I need to make this video. Like I have the song recorded and done. I never made a video to it. And I, I found that one and then started to look through my computer and I realized I have like three other ones. So I've got some, you know, that the, having coming. the four, having, yeah, having the four kids really s- <laughs> slowed down making the music video, <laughs> but they're coming. <laughs> no, we just had wait, Mando. Mando was recent. So yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. Okay. Um, what is your favorite comedy bit that you have done music or mustache wise either way? Uh, my favorite, you, you talked about it um, when we were talking earlier. Uh, my favorite video, music video that we've done has been the station two. That, oh, dude, that, that one, was, like the high production value, everything. It, yes, <laughs> yes, dude. That is artistically the, the singing with my wife and I. Like, I just thought that was the one that I was the most happy with, with just how it came out. And then it's just poetic justice that when I got promoted, I'm at station two. Station so. two. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So. Um, uh, and then for the for the the Fenton one, uh, the caller asked for no lights and siren. Yeah. Yes. He's like, oh, he does, does he? Ah, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, my favorite one. 
All right. Uh, firefighter, paramedic, also wildland, right? You you do, I mean, basically, boom, boom, boom. Uh, mm-hmm. Favorite part of the job for you? Favorite part of the job? Oh, man. Um, honestly, I, I love the uh, – I love station life. Like I love just wrapping around the station with wrapping around the t- the dinner table with the guys and, and, and just telling jokes and telling stories. And, um, the camaraderie for me is awesome. Um, right now I'm on a, I'm on a short stint, um, on a 40 hour stint doing some video projects for my department. Okay. And I was telling my wife last night, I'm like, I was I I went walking the other night and I was thinking I was like looking through my phone who can I call like I need to talk to someone I told her I'm like it's not good for me to not be around people and you could probably tell just from here right now I freaking I don't shut up so <laughs> but good for I just I, yeah I love the I love I love the the camaraderie the station life um, and honestly for me the bet my favorite my with, with with that my favorite thing is to be able to talk to new people i love talking to new guys um i have a probationary guy in my truck right now and i love being able to i'm an open book i'm probably a little more uh transparent than i should be i tell people everything but i just i love to be able to tell people things that i've learned um i love to be able to hear other people's stories and hear the things that they've learned um, and I just love to pass on that knowledge. And my favorite thing that I've done thus far um, in my career was I, I had the opportunity uh, about seven years ago, I went down to the training academy and I was a mentor. And that was just, it was just awesome. Cause it was like, you were the nice recruit officer, retraining officer. You know, you had, you got the RTOs and they're yelling, screaming, doing whatever, but then you got the mentor and you're like, you're like the buddy and you get right, to yeah. come alongside yeah. of them. And, you know, and you just, it, it was just, that was awesome. That was such a rewarding experience. I got more out of it, I think, than the recruits probably did. Uh, any uh, special? Uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to say this question right. Like any special comedy, or is is it strictly off the cuff? Do you have anything special built coming? Any plans? Anything, um, anything weird to look out for? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely gonna. I, I'm like in this. This is like I kind of we move some of our kids out of a room and now I've got like a studio. So I'm going to be coming out with some different style of content, a little bit, some, some longer form. I'm like kicking around the idea of doing a podcast. Um, oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't would know. Would it be Brent it, or would it be Fenton? I'm just asking. Um, it would be me. It would be, okay, it would be okay, Brent, okay. but fair it would, enough, but it enough. would. Yeah. And uh, Fenton would definitely make an appearance on there, but uh, like, I'm kind of tossing around that idea of actually uh, doing that. Um, and having my wife be with, with me on it, those kind of things. So I don't know. I, the thing is, is like, I realize that these take an incredible amount of time. And that's one thing that I don't have is an incredible amount of time and to right. do it. No, especially to do on the it job. Well, especially on the job. Yeah. Yeah. And to do it correctly and do it well, but also to be able to balance family and all the fit and stuff and everything else. I'm also the PIO for my department. There's a lot of things that I have to balance and, you know, my family is number one, takes priority, but, uh, but no, so I've, I've got that. Um, I definitely have, I have music videos coming up. There's going to be a, uh, a music video. It's going to be, I'll probably post it July 17th. And that's because my department does, uh, their annual banquet. Okay. We haven't had it for the last couple of years because of the Rona, but, uh, <laughs> it's right back. And so, so I'm, I'm making a, a music video for that. I think people it's, it is, uh, the theme on that one is people who aren't pulling over the lights and sirens, right not on, pulling to right the right. On. So yes, it, yes. that one, I'm, I'm actually very excited for this one. It's going to be, I'm trying to, it's going to be very dramatic. So I'm excited for it. <laughs> I like it, man. I love it. So, I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, Negley said, interested in coming to the Orlando fire conference in February of 23. So there we go. Just got a random yeah. from Stephen Negley throwing at you, but I had to read it to you. Cause why not? Oh yeah. Man, yeah, uh, there's so many. That's one thing that I've learned is there's so many fire conferences. And, Orlando's yeah. one of the best, uh, and have been around. Yeah, they celebrated twenty. I think this year was twenty. Oh so, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and I got iced out. That was the whole thing. I was like gonna fly down there for the twentieth because it's always been hands on for twenty years, and then they finally did lectures, and I was gonna go lecture, and then mm-hmm. the mother of all ice storms said, "No, you're not." And so anyway. <laughs> we don't uh, have that problem here <laughs> now. Your partner in crime, Jason Patton, man, mm-hmm. his style, your style, two different styles. 
Do you for guys sure. feed? Do you guys? I mean, obviously, when you guys do stuff together, it's awesome. I love the the old west shootout when you guys. And when I was watching, oh, yeah. the first time I watched, I'm like, why is Jason holding that little fog nozzle? And then I was like, why is firefighter Fenton holding a little fog? And then the end of it when he's like smooth bore, you know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. it, was <laughs> it was all done intentionally, but I didn't realize yeah. it the first time I watched it. But it was it was beautifully done. Uh, but my point is, how much do you guys feed off each other? Uh, have you ever thought about doing the green screen type stuff he does? Has he ever thought about uh, coming in and being, you know, like how much do you guys collaborate basically is what I'm saying. We talk, we talk all the time. We, we talk right. almost every week. Um, so we collaborate a lot. Um, we bounce each other ideas off each other all the time. Like, Hey, I'm making this video. I, I think this is funny. Would what you, do you think? Or, or, or what do you think? Or like, yeah, he'll send the video to me and I'll watch it or I'll send him a video of mine and he'll watch it and be like, would you change anything? Would you add anything? So we, we, we get along really, really well. And that's the cool thing is like our style and our, we are very, very, very different, yes. um, but we feed, we feed off of each other very well. He's a, he's an incredible, um, uh, script writer. He's, he's okay. really, he, he, he does really well. Like he writes the scripts for like the fire department coffee videos and things like nice. that. And, and so, and, and I'm getting able to branch it, branch out and help do that as well. And so, um it's just, it's it's like a muscle man you know it's like i i yeah. write my certain type of comedy but um scripts are completely different you know writing writing scripts is totally different so it's like it's just kind of unlocking that part of my brain and, and and working out that muscle that that makes to make it that much stronger but it's 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 really great we we get along um really really well and we we collaborate all the time we talk like i said almost uh almost every week and uh just kind of bounce ideas off each other um, we share ideas and so, yeah. No, and, and what you guys do, fire department coffee and everything is awesome. Uh, Andrew, again, I got one more. Uh, what and who helped you decide to start posting videos? Like where, what, what, what was the kickoff? You know, I honestly, I always, uh, I always, like I said, I always love making people laugh. I was always really into comedy, really into music growing up. That's how my wife and I met was doing music together. Um, and so, you know, hearing people say, man, you should have been, you should have been a comedian. You missed your calling. I started thinking like, man, hap, did I miss my calling? And my department did a, a banquet every year for like awards and firefighter of the year and all that kind of stuff. Sure. And sometimes those nights can get a little stale, you know, when people are up there talking, it's like somebody, talking after you know person after person talking and so they were like we need to have something that kind of breaks it up and so um that's when i made i was actually coming back from a call with my partner dave in the rescue and it was literally the my knee hurts now call and we came <laughs> back we came back from the call and the lady in a bellum song came on the radio while we were driving down the freeway and i said it's a quarter after one call the 911 because my knee hurts now and he started dying laughing and then i was like I should do a song. And yeah, I just yeah. sat there, wrote that whole thing down. It went and then made that video and it blew up overnight, got almost a million views like overnight, which was crazy. Right. And, and then, uh, I, I kept making videos. I only made like one video a year for like seven years. Um, after that. Really? And yeah. <laughs> and I just, I just didn't know. I didn't know right, social right. media. I didn't capitalize on that momentum. And then, um, um uh, scott uh from fireman 323 he scott reached out and said hey man i think you're really missing a boat and i'm like what do you mean and he's like i've been a fan of yours since you did my knee hurts now all that time ago and, and every one of your videos has been funny since and i think you could really you should you should try and do the short form stuff he's like i think you got the chops for it you should you should try and that was in november of 2018 and I think I had like 300 followers or something like that on Instagram. And it was just, I just didn't really, I wasn't really active. Sure. And um, I was talking to my wife and I said, you know what? I'm going to challenge myself and see if I can't put out one piece of comedy or one piece of content uh, every day of December in 2018. She's like, go for it. And I did it. And by the end of December, I had like 3,300, I gained like 3,000 in a month. And then I just kept going and mm -hmm. just, I went all out and just kept going, 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 going. Uh, and it's content, been, <laughs> content is king, man. And yeah. Oh man. And it's been, and it's been great. I've been slow this year. I just been kind of having a little mental break because <laughs> it's, sure. Dude, it's, it's, an, it's hard. Yeah, I can only imagine if you tried to keep that yeah. pace. Holy crap. Yeah. You, you would melt down. 
Yeah, it's <laughs> hard. And, and, and yeah, and it's like I lo- I mean, making the content is one thing. Like I I enjoy doing that, but for me, it just it does take time, and I just want to make sure that I'm I'm uh, keeping priority with like keep my priorities straight. You know, my 100%. I don't want my family I don't want my family mm. to suffer because I'm you know trying and to that- go all. That might be your most powerful message. You know what I'm saying? Because you are a very successful uh, influencer, for lack of a better term. I don't know what you call it inside the fire sphere. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not the. But yeah, hundred yeah, percent, man. I just it's easy it. to lose sight. Yeah, I say I'm an internet douche, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the idea, I love that. Uh, okay, uh, now I like to always ask my guests, um, book or books that you think firefighters should be. I don't know if you're a reader or not a reader. I have no idea, but I always ask book or books that you think firefighters should be reading. Um, book. See, I need to get better at reading books like the Bible. <laughs> That's a great one. The Bible is not a, great a bad one. answer. Um, but, uh, um, man, um, buddy to boss. That's a good one. Solid. That, that one, uh, that one, that for me, that that's the biggest um, I wouldn't say struggle, but it is a struggle. I mean, it's like, it's just learning that role, learning from being a firefighter for almost 20 years. And now I'm a captain. It's learning that role of buddy to boss. But, and, and for me, it's not even so much that for me, it's really like, I don't want to make my guys look bad because I, I did and I'm sorry. I'm kind of doing like a little uh, rabbit trail real quick but like no. we had a call one of my first calls as a as a, an actual officer it was like a check flooding we get to a house and it was like an electrician was up in the attic and this house was a large house they were sprinkler and the electrician lost his footing stepped on that sprinkler pipe snapped it i mean it is flooding c- catastrophically flooding this house i mean there's four inches of water it's like a five thousand square foot house oh. huge house and it's just oh my gosh so um and we're on scene for three seconds and I'm on a ladder up in the attic and I'm like, what am I doing right now while I'm up there? Because I'm looking down and like, you know, there's a firefighter, there's like one firefighter and they're, they're looking up at me and I'm just like, what am I doing right now? Cause I was just so used to being in that worker bee mode. And that's right. not to say that I'm, cause I'm a working officer as well. Like I, I'm not going to sit there and not, not work, but it was a balance, dude. You, it, there, it is there's it, a balance. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah, you can actually like, rob them of their growth. You can rob them of their ability to to fail. You can rob them of their ability to excel. And you don't even realize you're doing it. Oh, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. That's exactly it. Because uh, I remember a special call on the ladder truck. And they came with some of their salvage stuff. And we had we have squeegees. And they had a bunch of squeegees and things and salvage stuff. And so they were helping us because it was all hands on deck in this house. And the my buddy, Jim, he's the ladder captain. Jim was talking crap to one of my guys was like, Oh, you too good. You, you're gonna, you can't do anything. You're going to make your captain work. Right. And I realized I was like, that's on me. That wasn't right. him. He, right. I didn't even give him the opportunity to work. I just went to work. And I was like, I got to like back up a minute. Like, here you go. Cause I don't want to make them look bad. Like you no, said, I don't want to. No, yeah. we call it major nozzle hog. Cause major is a company officer in art, but it's called major nozzle hog or captain nozzle hog whatever you want yep. to call it, but it's a, it's the same, like, give me the nozzle kid. You can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. Dude. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now we have a thing on the scrap. It's called the next five questions for firefighters. It used to be the five questions for firefighters. And after a hundred episodes or so, all the low hanging fruit was taken and all the answers had been given. So we advanced it to the next five questions for firefighters. Here's the deal. There are no right or wrong answers. They are completely your opinion. The points are arbitrary. They're passed out by me. So my question for you, Brent Fenton, is are you ready for the next five questions for firefighters? Yes. Here we go. Number one, what single characteristic makes the difference between a run-of-the-mill firefighter and the top-tier go-to badass firefighter? Oh, man. What single characteristic? I And my... In my opinion, I think uh, humility, um, being 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 humble. I think I think somebody being hum- somebody who's who's just about it doesn't talk about it. It's just about it. You know what I mean? Like you, like I I don't know. Like I, I always I always think you know if you're on fire, you don't have to tell somebody 
you're on fire. They just see it, you know, yeah. they just know it. So it's like, you don't have to, don't, don't talk about how awesome you are. Just be awesome. And people will just see that, you know, like, you know, like, and I just think just being, just be about it, be humble, be nice. That's the biggest thing. Be nice. It's not that hard. It's free. It's not that hard. You never know who's going to be your boss <laughs> one day. Dude, I, I will tell you this. I love the answer. Humility. I love the answer. Be humble. And then you said something like, hey, if you're on fire, you don't have to tell people. you're." One of my favorite things to tell people is, hey, if you're rich, you don't have to tell people you're rich. If you're tough, you don't have to tell people you're tough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And dude, so 100% max points on number one because uh, <laughs> the answers. Number two, if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice as a rookie, what would it be? Don't put the con so the concentrated dish soap in the dishwasher. Uh, no, that's a real story too. Um, <laughs> if I could go back, that but that's that's true. A lot of suds. Uh, I filled the station up with suds. Yeah. Um, if I could go back, um, I would say uh, don't pass up on any opportunities. Out of don't pass up on any opportunities out of fear that you're not ready. Mm. just do it because I, I i passed up i i got into the first captain's promotional exam mm -hmm. and and i honestly i don't know i can't really say it was bad um i would just say my reasoning for for passing up on it i i don't necessarily like i was just like i don't think i'm ready i like i was worried about what if i get it uh, you know and i don't I, that shouldn't have been the reason of what like it was honestly it was just fear like and don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to succeed. Just do it, you know, and, and learn it because I, w I was going to test for captain. I think I had six years on seven years on, which was seven because you had to have seven years on. And I just felt like I didn't have enough time on. And I was just like, man, I, I so I was just like, I'm not going to do it. And I kind of, I don't regret it, but I would have, if nothing else, I would have gained experience from even just the process of it. Right on. So, yeah, I would say just, yeah, I would tell myself, just do it. Don't be afraid of it. Who cares if you're, who cares if you're ready for it? You can always get ready. I'm telling you this right now. I don't know if I'd give you max points on that answer before yesterday, but yesterday I sat in my chief's office and had an hour long conversation with a young firefighter who wasn't sure if you know he that basically was his whole rationalization was what you just walked through i love the answer man and i love the advice and i'm going to make him listen to this because it won't be coming from me so uh i love that do not pass any opportunity max points number three what is your favorite training drill my favorite training drill my favorite training drill i love i love to do um search and rescues I love to do search and rescue drills where you black people out. Uh, we just, we actually just did it the other day at my station um, where uh, you get to, you get to, well, a lot of times we'll do a skills course and then do a search and rescue. So that way you're tired, you're exhausted. You have your, so just get yourself in, in the conditions where you, you're going to be uh, working hard, breathing hard. Um, and search and rescue for and what what we like to do is you're, you're looking for a down or, or you're just doing a search and then we always pull somebody and it's a down firefighter but you're black you're you're blacked out in your mask um we have to, you have to do coupling recognition um and then making sure you got tools in your pocket because you're going to get tangled up in some wires um and and we do everything where we you know have have where you got to pull off your air pack while you're still breathing air and push it through and slide through a small opening, get in package a patient. And then like, when you get in there, once we, once we get like the most tired, what I like to do is like, when I notice that like my firefighters like smoke, like give me a mayday. Right. You know, you know, I like actually, actually use the cognitive abilities while you're just completely mm -hmm. exhausted. Yeah. I love that. Love yeah. That. Get thinking while you're exhausted because it's just, I mean, I, I like that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's the low frequency, high risk stuff but you have to be on it because I mean, we don't, there's a reason why we don't do minimum company standards for difficulty breathing. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause it's, you know, so. I love that. And especially the final answer, hundred percent crushing yeah. it. Max points. Number four, what mistake have you learned the most from in your fire service career? Learned the most from in my fire service career. Um, I would obviously, I would just say, you know, that fire, mm -hmm. um, I Sometimes. think, I think, 
Awesome. And, and it's yeah. hard. It's hard. It's hard to even say that like, that was a huge mistake because, like I said, it just was the the cards were stacked against me. But I but I know I made mistakes for sure. But I would say the thing that I yeah is um, getting trapped in that we can get this, we can win, you know, we can do this, and then and then just mistaking making assumptions. I guess would be assumptions about instead of just because I was a fairly new actor as well and, and making assumptions that like, Oh, they're good. They're good. You can't do that. You got to get out and train. You got to get out and pick people's minds and, and uh, put them at. in difficult situations and see where they're truly at. Love that man. Love it. Number five, final question. The same question. It's always come heavy fire, searchable space. Would you rather be assigned to the nozzle or first in on VES? Uh, I, I like the nozzle. <laughs> yeah. Love the knob. Um, yeah. I love, I love, yeah. Doing nozzle, nozzle work, doing search. See, we don't, um, we don't do like the VES really on the, at least in the, the Phoenix automatic aid system. Fair so, enough. but, but yeah, like that, that for us, I mean, I've been on ladder trucks and vented. Um, I love ladder work too. My st- my truck. We always make the joke. We we say that we're a engine <laughs> because we are we are an engine, but we have saws, fans, extrication equipment. We have all the ladder equipment because where we're at, it's all hydrants, it's all streets, it's everything like that. So when we respond out of our area into the more rural areas, we will work as a ladder sure. company. Um, where in our area where my department's ladder is, our ladder is in the, the, the rural area because they, but they co-man an engine. So if they're going to be first on scene of a fire, they're bringing an engine. We're going to come in and be the ladder. But if they come to one of our fires, we're going to be the engine. They're going to come in and be the ladder with the big stick because also we won't operate our, our stick off road. Right on, so. right on, man. And that makes the final answers officially 145 scraps in the book brent fenton uh if someone wants to get a hold of you uh reach out to you what's the best way to do so i'm on all the social medias you know facebook uh instagram tiktok twitter you name it uh firefighter it's at or youtube also um firefighter fenton you just look it up at firefighter fenton if you search firefighter fenton on youtube you'll find it it's firefighter Fent on Twitter because Twitter's lame and won't let it me have that long of a name. <laughs> but, but yeah, you can find me there and uh, you'll see all my stuff. Dude, I can't tell you enough. Uh, thank you for giving me your evening. And I know that I had to, I, my scheduling is terrible. So I had to cancel and then bring him back in. And he was, he was more than gracious. So I can only say thank you for being so gracious. I'll do my housekeeping here at the end, which is go to firehousevigilance.com. Swag prices, plain and simple. I'm not making a big news announcement. Prices of everything are going up. So swag prices of hats, shirts, books, coins, etc. is all going up. Uh, next week, the price increase is going. So I'm telling you this so that this week you can go buy before the prices go up. Uh, no choice in that matter. Uh, if you want something, grab it now. Uh, there is a private group on Facebook. It's not for everybody. It's only for the people that love the scrap, want to support the scrap and want to be the insiders on how the scrap moves forward as far as guests, questions, uh, and ways to improve it. Uh, if you want to get invited, go to firehousevigilance.com, support the scrap. You'll get invited. Uh, it's the vigilantes. It's for the insiders. It's for the scrappiest of the scrappers. Uh, once a month, I go live and do a thing called The Forum. The first one is next Tuesday. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Uh, very informal. We'll discuss the future and all that stuff and brainstorm. I really look forward to it. I look forward to everybody. Uh, the scrap will always be free. It will always be out here, and it will always never be gated. But the vigilantes is co- something completely separate. Uh, what else have I got? Place your support. Yes, got it. Next up, on the scrap. Average Jake, Robbie Owens. He's been in here tonight making comments. Uh, he's coming up next. I believe it's Monday. Don't quote me because I can't see my whiteboard as I look over to the side. But Average Jake, Robbie Owens on Monday, followed by uh, the first Vigilantes Forum on Tuesday. And then my man from Texas, Kevin Fluger, coming on. And then Todd Shepard. So the scrap's loaded up all the way into July. And it's looking sweet. My brother, Brent Fenton, 
thank you so much for being a phenomenal guest. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. Dude, it was a blast. Everybody, the audience, guys, your questions and comments is what makes us so special. Remember, mutts don't scrap. I hope the tone stays silent unless it's burning. Stay safe out there.